Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation for Z. As you know, Z is a complex number and we're going to be solving for Z. I'll be presenting two methods and bear with me while I do the first method, it's a little bit painful. So first method, since Z is a complex number, I can write it in standard form as A plus BI. Think about the alternative, see if you can write z as r times e to the power i theta, and then solve for that. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in. We're going to get a plus 2 plus bi after arranging the terms. And then we're going to divide it by 1 minus z, which is going to be 1 minus a minus bi. And that's equal to i over 2. Let's write it as 1 half of i. Now, I want to focus on the left-hand side and multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So a plus 2 plus bi over 1 minus a minus bi. And I want to multiply it by 1 minus a plus bi over the same thing, which is 1. So it's not going to change the value. Now we're going to distribute here, but while distributing, be careful. Keep the real part together and then multiply them all together. So a plus 2 multiplied by 1 minus a is going to be the first part. Then I'm going to multiply a plus 2 by bi, which is going to give me a plus 2 times bi. And now I'm going to multiply bi times 1 minus a, which is going to give me b times 1 minus a i. And bi times bi is b squared i squared. i squared equals negative 1. Remember that? That's one thing that you should never forget, right? And that's going to give me minus b squared the whole thing. And then we're going to go ahead and divide it by the denominator. Now we're multiplying two conjugates. And remember, when you multiply two conjugates, you always get a real number, which is the sum of the squares of the real parts and the imaginary parts. So it's going to be 1 minus a squared plus b squared. And this is equal to 1 half of i. Now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit, put the imaginary and real parts together, simplify as much as possible, and then we're going to set it equal to uh, one half of i. So if you distribute here, you get a minus a squared plus 2 minus 2a two for the real part, and now we're going to have a b squared minus b squared. And when you combine these together, you're going to get a b i and minus a b i. They're going to cancel out, and then we're going to get 2 b i and b i, which is going to give us 3 b i and that'll be divided by the denominator, and this is going to equal 1 half of i. Let's simplify the numerator a little bit and then separate the real parts and the imaginary parts. So let's see. We can probably go with the 2 first. We have a 2 minus, this is going to give me a minus a, and then minus a squared minus b squared. And that'll be divided by the denominator, 1 minus a squared, plus b squared. We can keep it that way for now. Plus, and the imaginary part 3b is going to be divided by the denominator again. And this will be multiplied by i, and this will equal 1 half of i. Great. So we got two complex numbers that are equal to each other, and that means the real parts are equal, imaginary parts are equal. But there is no real part on the right-hand side, therefore this whole thing needs to be 0, which means its numerator should be zero, right? And the imaginary part is supposed to be one half. So we're gonna set up two equations from here that's gonna give us a system. We're gonna solve that system and see what happens. And then I'll present the second method, okay? So from the fraction being equal to zero, we basically get two equals a plus a squared plus b squared. That's one of the equations I'm getting. And the second one uh, is a little more work. 3b divided by 1 minus a squared plus b squared equals 1 half. Let's cross multiply. 1 minus a squared plus b squared equals 6b. Now here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead and expand this. 1 minus 2a plus a squared plus b squared equals 6b. And then from both of these equations, since I have two equations and both of them contain a squared plus b squared, I want to extract it and set it equal to each other. So from the first equation, let's call this number one and now let's call this number two. From the first equation, a squared plus b squared is equal to two minus a. And from the second equation, a squared plus b squared is equal to six b plus two a minus one. So when two things are equal to the same thing, then they are equal. 
So these two things are equal. Make sense? Let's go ahead and set, it, set them equal to each other. 6b plus 2a minus 1 equals 2 minus a. Okay, how do we simplify this? Let's put everything on the same side and numbers on the other side. So 6b plus 3a is equal to 3. Divide everything by 3. 2b or not 2b plus a equals 1. Awesome. This is nice because I can solve for a and substitute, right? a equals 1 minus 2b. Now, we can use any of these equations. doesn't matter which one. The first one looks a little simpler. Let's go ahead and use it. a squared plus b squared is equal to 2 minus a. And let's go ahead and replace a with this. Okay? So that's going to give me 1 minus 2b squared plus b squared equals 2 minus 1 minus 2b. Make sure to use parentheses if you're subtracting an expression. Okay? Let's expand the left-hand side. 1 minus 4b plus 4b squared plus b squared. That's going to give us a 5b squared. We can simplify it next. This is going to give me a 1 plus 2b. 2b comes up a lot today. And now 5b squared minus 4b plus 1 equals 2b plus 1. Let's go ahead and turn this into a full quadratic, but guess what? 1 cancels out, so that's going to be even easier. 5b squared minus 6b equals 0. This is factorable. Take out the greatest common factor, and that gives you 5b minus 6 equals 0. From here, we get two solutions, and we're going to explore both of them. One of them is b equals 0, and the other one is b equals 6 over 5, as you know from the linear equation, right? So when you plug these in, uh, you're going to find the a values. And remember, we have a formula. a is equal to 1 minus 2b. a is equal to, let's copy that here real quick. And now, if b is 0, then a is going to be 1. Hmm, interesting. And if b is equal to 6 over 5, double that, 12 over 5, subtract from 1, 5 over 5, that's going to give you negative 7 over 5. So we got these ordered pairs, and this basically means that z equals a plus b. I remember that was our initial assumption, right? We wrote z in, what's it called, standard form. So z can be written as a plus bi. That's the name of the channel as well. So from here, we get z equals 1 because b is 0. No imaginary part. And from here, we get z equals a plus bi. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and then we'll come back and check with these. All right? And if you've seen it already, don't say anything. Okay. So here's the second method, and the second method is actually uh, much, much nicer. That's why it is the second method. Okay. z plus 2 divided by 1 minus z equals i over 2. We're just going to cross multiply. There's no need to replace z with a plus bi, but I want to show you the general method because sometimes you may want an alternative or just to check your work. Anyways, if you cross multiply, you're going to get 2z plus 4 equals i minus iz. Let's go ahead and put all the z's on the same side. 2z plus iz, and then put the 4 on the right, i minus 4. I could probably write this as negative 4 plus i, which is better because always write complex numbers in standard form as much as possible. Here, we can factor out a z. And guess what? We could use division to find, at this point, you can also divide, um, replace z with a plus bi, but there's no need. We're just going to divide by using the conjugates again, but this time it's going to be much easier because we know the numbers. And if you distribute this, you're going to get negative 8 plus 1. This is going to give you negative 7. And then uh, 4i plus 2i is going to give you 6i. And at the bottom, you're going to get 5. And this is going to give you a single solution. How come? We got two solutions with the first method. How come we're finding one solution only with the second method? Is something missing? Where is the thing? Remember, with the first method, one of the solutions was z equals 1. And the original equation was z plus 2 divided by 1 minus z equals i over 2. z equals 1 is a no-no because it makes the denominator 0. But why did it pop up after cross-multiplication? Who knows? This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.